Now anybody who's been to Oregon knows it rains a lot here. And I happen to have a very large section of roof that goes into one gutter. And I'm gonna see if I can collect all this down one downspout and make hydroelectric power. Now in order to figure out the flow rate into the gutter, I need to know how big my roof is. So once I calculate the horizontal distance and the width, I can multiply that times how much rain we're getting per hour. Now my roof is not a perfect rectangle, but it's about 30 by 30 feet, which is 900 square feet, which is over 100,000 square inches. Now moderate rainfall is anywhere from 0.1 to 0.3 inches per hour, which if we multiply times that area of the roof and convert to gallons, it comes out to over 100 gallons an hour of rain on that roof. Now, if we want to break that down into minutes, divide by 60, and it's almost two gallons of rain a minute coming off of this roof into that single gutter. But let's be honest, a gallon or so of water per minute is not a lot. So while we could use a standard water wheel that works on the weight of the water, we're gonna try a special kind of turbine called a Pelton wheel to maximize the amount of energy we get from our water. The cupped blades of a Pelton wheel force a jet of water to take a U-turn, which converts almost all of its energy into motion. And here's how we demonstrate that. When I spray the wood, it's just bringing the water to a stop. But when I move over to the bowl, it's stopping the water and sending it back at me, which is double the change in momentum. And that's why the pendulum is going higher with the bowl. Now, Pelton wheels have been around for a very long time. Lester Pelton invented them back in the late 1800s, but they are still notoriously difficult to produce. So rather than build them from scratch, I'm just printing it on my 3D printer. But when I test the Pelton wheel under a faucet, it looks pretty much like any other water wheel. That kind of makes sense though, since they're supposed to run on a jet of water. But how do we make rainwater squirt like a jet? Hydroelectric dams get their water pressure from the height of the water behind the dam. To try to replicate this effect, I'm using my hose to pour a gallon a minute of water into the top of a vertical pipe. As soon as I drill a hole near the bottom, the water comes shooting out. Now I'm concerned I may have restricted the flow but when I time how long it takes to fill a gallon jug, it's still good. And when I position the Pelton wheel in the jet of water, it spins three times faster than it did under the faucet. That actually worked way better than I thought it would, which I guess is an indicator of how important height is in hydroelectric power. And think about it. This jug by itself isn't all that impressive, but if you had to lift it back up to the gutter where it came from, that sounds like work. And in fact, in physics, that's what we call it. Force, in this case, the weight of the jug, times distance, how far you lift it, equals work. And if we multiply that times how often we have to do it, we get power. And it's really important that I know how much power we can expect to get out of this. Because if it's not enough, I'm not going to waste my time building it. Now to be able to calculate how much power is available, I need four things. The flow of water, the height that we're working with, the density of the water, and the effects of gravity. Now we already figured out flow in gallons per minute, but this is way easier in metric, so I'm converting to liters per second. I'm estimating the height in meters, and of course density, kilograms per liter, and acceleration of gravity. Multiply them all together and the units work out to watts, which we are now getting almost exactly two watts. That's not a lot of power if you compare it to a 60 watt light bulb, but hopefully it's enough to light some LEDs and maybe charge a phone, if we can convert enough of it to electricity. Now, most of us know electricity will make a motor turn, but did you know we can reverse that and turn a motor to make electricity? For example, just flicking the shaft of this tiny motor is enough to light an LED. But the conversion isn't perfect. Only some of the energy turning the shaft gets made into electricity. 
This is because inside the motor are lots of moving parts that lose energy to friction. This is the case with every device we use. Only some of the energy we put into it actually does what we want it to do. The rest is lost. In a motor or generator, this is due to mechanical friction in the shaft and brushes, electrical resistance in the wires, and even magnetic losses as the magnetic fields get flipped around. Now dividing the output power by the input power tells us how efficient our generator is. I'm guessing we're only going to convert about 50% of our energy to electricity, meaning we're only going to get about one watt from the two watts we have available. Plus, we still have to decide on a motor for this project. One of these is built for 10 times more current than the other, but is still too small. What we need is a much bigger one, purpose-built as a generator for much larger current. Ta-da! Man, I love the internet. Now that generator is built for 12 volts at 3000 RPM. I need to know exactly how to fast to spin it to get at least five volts. So I've checked it up in my lathe and I have something called a strobotack that flashes light at a very precise speed to make it look like the chuck has stopped moving. So you can see I've got it running almost right at six volts. And if I turn the lights off, Alexa, lights off. You can see it looks like the chuck has stopped moving. But the readout shows 1900 RPM. So I know in order to get six volts, I need 1900 RPM on this motor. Okay, we've gotten to a point in the project where I can't do a lot more experimenting without building the actual setup. So I've enlisted my son to help me and we're just gonna put it together, mounting it to the fence, I'm using a clear plastic piece of PVC so we can see if the water level is actually filling up the pipe or if it's getting clogged up with leaves or something. Honestly, one of the things that kept me from doing this project was knowing I was gonna have to rip a downspout off the house, but hey, there are sacrifices that must be made. Now that I'm ready to test this thing, there's not a drop of rain in sight. So we're just gonna use a garden hose to give us about the right amount of flow. Another thing to be careful of, if I drill too big of a hole at the bottom for the jet, it could drain all the water out and never build up any pressure. So I gotta start super small and just work my way up, measuring the flow to make sure we get that 1.7, 1.8 gallons per minute. Okay, now that we have a two watt jet of water, we can try our Pelton wheel and see what kind of voltage this generator can produce. And of course, I just can't resist the urge to connect some kind of load and just verify that the math hasn't completely been lying to us. All right, first time powering a light with this thing. Hey, check it out. <laughs> It's glowing bright. All right, this is, uh, what is this, like 1.7 gallons a minute. We're using a hose, so we're not exactly generating power, but we are converting uh, hydro, I guess, water power. This is hydroelectric. We are using uh, water to generate this power and turn on our little LED. I can't wait to do this for real. All right, shut down the hose, <laughs> please. Okay, that was awesome. But there is an issue. If you use the footage to measure the RPM of the impeller, we're only at 923 RPM. And that's a lot less than that 1900 or so that we figured out the generator needs. So if we wanna charge a phone with that five volts, we're gonna to have to speed up the generator with some kind of gears. Fortunately for the gears, all we have to do is model them up, 3D print them out. We've got gears that now fit together really well. Now, we need a way to mount these things around the pipe. And my plan is, I'm gonna take a piece of that diamond plate that I've got lying around, cut out a chunk of it, and mount it to the pipe with some pipe clamps. Once we've got the diamond plate mounted on there, we'll be able to position the Pelton wheel right in front of the jet, bump it around, get it in exactly the right position. Once that's on there, we'll be able to 
mount the generator on the back side to get the optimal mesh with the gears. Not too bad, huh? Got the Pelton wheel lined up with the pipe. I'm planning on just shimming these brackets in and out to get it directly on center with the Pelton wheel. And now we have our little gear on the back. And all we need to do is position this somehow to mesh as good as we can with that. I'm thinking I'm gonna use this piece of material, cut off a little bracket, sort of have a swing arm thing going here that a little bit of the weight of this will help engage it. And if I need to, I can add a little spring with a tensioner. That actually went together pretty well. I am a little concerned though, by doubling the speed on the generator, we've also doubled the resistance for the Pelton wheel. So I'm a little concerned that it's not gonna spin as fast as it did and we may not get enough voltage out of the generator. But there's only one way to find out. Okay, we've got it mounted up. I'm going to turn on our artificial rain and see how she does. Oh, hey, <laughs> squirting back at me. The Pelton wheel's doing its job. Does it go on its own? That's what I want to know. We're not quite at the full pressure yet. Come on. Okay, now we're at full pressure and it's uh, it's coming back at me. Look familiar? And if I give it a little help. No, okay, we gotta put, reposition it. Have I, am I, oh, I'm clogged. Got pine needles in there. Fortunately, I made a, a little clean out trap. This is gonna get messy. Did that clean out my needles? That looks a little more like a nice jet, doesn't it? Come on, Pelton, don't let me down. Hey! Okay, nowhere near the speed we were getting, so let's see. That's uh, barely over a volt, so. Oh, that's too slow. Oh, that's faster. Two and a half. Oh, what happened? Oh, and I get more debris in there. It spit it out though. <laughs> Whoa, all of a sudden I'm getting 2.7, 2.8. What'd I do? All right, I'm gonna try adding some lubrication to the uh, to my gears back here, see what happens. It actually sped it up a little bit. <laughs> that jumped over three. <laughs> See if I can get some on that. I know the bearing is sealed, but why not? That actually worked. It went up to 3.2. Look how fast that sucker goes when I take the load off. Holy moly. All right, I don't want to strip my gears, so I got to stop it. Uh 
Okay, when I lift a little bit on the, uh, I'm actually lifting the generator a little bit so it isn't pushing the gears as hard together and it's speeding up quite a bit. So I gotta, I'm gonna pause it for a second and make some adjustments. I saw it get to four volts. All right, I've been playing with this all morning and I was hoping to get that one watt of power out of our two watt jet of water but it looks like maybe I'm only getting a quarter water less. But there are a lot of improvements we could make. This Pelton wheel has a couple of pieces broke off on it from when I came off the printer, so we can improve it quite a bit with, some, with that and other printing techniques. The gears are clearly, I mean, you can hear them, so they're losing power just through the action of the gears. We could get rid of those by going direct drive to the generator and go with a smaller diameter Pelton wheel to try to pick up the speed. Third, we definitely are not creating a nice jet of water. This is just a hole in a pipe. So we can create an actual nozzle and get it as close as we can to the Pelton wheel like a more professional setup. And fourth, the generator we're using is kind of overkill. It's designed to be able to do 30 watts of power when we only want one. So there's a lot of mechanical losses in there we don't have to put up with. So I could try a smaller generator. So that's the end of part one of generating power from your rain gutters. In part two, we'll be making all those improvements I talked about and see if we can get up to that full watt. Until then, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. I think I lost an electron. I'm positive I lost an electron.